that um, in my senior year that I was able to um, really have the exposure to generating art as well as taking a class. And so I went to De La Salle North Catholic, it's in North Portland. And um, with, that, oh, with that high school experience, there is a corporate internship program. And so um, with that, we got to work one day out of the week and it would help to pay for tuition. And so my freshman year, I was able to work for Burgerville, um, Burgerville's head offices over here in Vancouver, Washington. And I was able to work in the marketing department. And so this is what you're seeing right now on the screen. Um, it, when I was 15, I had my first published work and it was to draw the cover of a kid's coloring book for the, the kids meals um, in all, at all the locations. So, um, so that's where I started to really see that um, for myself, I could be doing this as an active um, source of income, even though I didn't get paid for this, but that art could be taken more or pushed further besides um, just drawing something for fun. Um, let's see the next slide. And then next, I went to um, college. I'm a first generation college graduate, um, along with my other sisters. And there I was able to really um, experiment with different techniques and also just expand my own knowledge and um, with mediums. I used to never like to paint at all. I'm going to switch back over here. Um, I was strictly only drawing because in my mind, I thought, you know, tattoo artists, you, um, you have to only be drawing. You're not going to be painting anything. These things aren't really needed. So I was very, um, I had this tunnel vision to what I wanted to achieve. And so it wasn't until college that I was able to, you know, broaden uh, my view and experiment more. And so, um, let's see. so the next slide, um, with in college, I was able to, um, like this slide says, explore um, my own personal identity as being a Chicana um, here in the Pacific Northwest and how I could incorporate um, my own background and cultural upbringing into my work. And so that I feel like was having that opportunity and openness um, to incorporate a little bit of myself into my work was amazing. Um, sorry, I'm just moving along with different examples. And I really based it off of family portraits, um, you know, as a um, Latina, as a Chicana, family is so incredibly important. And I have had the privilege um, of having a super supportive family-based um, system and foundation to be backing me up along the way. And so what I wanted to really um, continue to push is that idea that family could be a type of modern day icon. And also to have this type of nostalgia with my work so that way it was also accessible to other people, regardless of how they identify, sorry. Um, oh, it's freaking out. And then, um, you know, once I graduated, I was able to also, um, you know, I took a break afterwards because I didn't want to continue making pieces um, for the sake of an assignment. So, um, and I felt kind of burnt out after graduating, which I feel like any creative, regardless of the medium, would experience at some point, especially when you're like in, you know, um, production mode essentially for years on end. And so, um, so I took a break and then eventually I was able to, you know, create more things that I was also excited about, uh, especially with content wise. So. Um, what you see here on the left, it's a Harry Potter collage and then a Pokemon theme one. Um, these were both essentially gifts for my young nephew um, at the time, just 
um, what do you call it? Just taking some of his like at the moment like interests and making uh, pieces of art that he could also have. Um, there were birthday presents. And so um, in lieu of giving um, him a toy, I am the art giving tia um, in my family. So um, I try to, I've done my best to um, try to be a role model to him and also, you know, expand his own view of the arts and also try to expose him to, uh, expose him to different artists as well. And then there's just more examples um, of other pieces I've done the for my best friend's nieces. Um, one of them loves Nicki Minaj. Um, so incorporating a little bit of pop culture in there. Um, and then on the right, her other niece loves dinosaurs. So she um, created that piece for her. Um, does anybody at this point have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Feel free to send it in the chat or unmute yourself, ask, whatever. Just want to make sure I'm also not going too fast for anybody. No, we're all good. Okay. I'm going to take the silence as a, uh, as a, we're good to go. Okay. So, um, for the longest time, since my artwork is so personal, um, because, you know, family portraiture, um, I never considered selling my work or um, I only thought of just displaying it and again, leaving it up there, people um, can absorb the information, see how um, they receive it essentially. And um, just, yeah, just appreciate it from not a true ex like uh, experience or being able to really relate. And so on the left, it was one of my first ones. I believe I was still in um, undergrad at the time. And that, that's my that's my father, uh, David. And that was a portrait I had painted of him um, from when he was younger. And on the right, um, my sister, Dr. Catherine Rodella, um, she is truly the one that really pushed me to start selling um, and to see how, um, how the pieces that I make that people could, you know, treasure that in their own. It doesn't necessarily have to be that somebody is buying a portrait of my family, which would be, you know, while I would appreciate that, it's, it's kind of strange. Um, but um, yeah, so she was also pushing the idea of making my work even more accessible and being able to incorporate my own culture and our background into pieces that, you know, up here, you know, living in the Portland metro area, it's not the most diverse of areas. Um, so these are just more images of other events that I've done pre-COVID. And um, so, yeah. And so once I also started to see that there was a true market and that people started to appreciate the representation with my work and myself, um, I really started to see how powerful that was um, for others to see, because especially with my own experience, I didn't have that type of um, exposure or um, true sense of representation, be it with teachers or also just seeing like other young artists um, that I could also relate to. And so that's also a huge part of like a mission with my work is that I wanna make it accessible and also um, something that people could connect to as well. Um, next there, I've also done like private commissions, um, which, you know, doing those events, you start to meet more people and you get to connect with them. And, um, you know, by networking, that's a huge thing that I believe that I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for networking and getting to know people and really pushing myself, you know, to throw myself out there and kind of be confident behind that. So these are just different examples of ones that I've done um, with the reference photos. Oop. And then another um, thing that I've also had the opportunity to do with my work 
um, outside of tattooing is um, get commission to for these pieces through the Regional Arts and Culture Council. I'm not sure, I'm gonna switch back over here, if anybody is familiar with um, that organization or not. Um, so oh, just to touch a brief overview about that organization is that they, um, they are in charge of placing artwork into all of the county buildings. Um, so be it with the Portland building or um, the new um, health building that is downtown Portland on Broadway, the um, Gladys McCoy building, um, those are, uh, and even the courthouse, um, they are in charge of um, curating essentially the pieces of work that go into those buildings. Um, so that way it also helps to expose people to artwork um, in places that are um, not just a gallery setting. So with these ones, I'm gonna switch back. So the one on the far left is one, um, all three of these actually are commissioned and are in um, county buildings in Portland. Um, I once again was working with the, um, the content of family and kind of having that type of little nostalgia. Um, the two on the end, so the one of the little girl and the one of the little boy looking out of the window, those are in the Gladys McCoy building um, on private um, patient um, floors. And then the one in the middle is actually in the Portland building. So where Portlandia is, um, that is where that painting is now hanging. Um, so yeah. Then I've also done some logos um, by meeting people. I know Diana, um, she is the one that really also helped to connect me with these different organizations and also events to produce a pieces of work um, that are also very different and also would try to um, kind of change somebody's perspective as far as what a logo can be. So it's not just like a little icon um, that is just like, um, just in the bottom corner, it can also be an entire piece. Um, and then does anybody have questions right now? I just want to make sure I'm also at a good pace. Good, 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 good. Okay. Um, next it, um, navigating, you know, how to keep producing work and be productive um, in the middle of a pandemic. Um, it definitely was, has been a struggle, um, especially last year with everything shutting down and for my work, especially as a tattoo artist and also having done all of these events, it's real, it's a lot of interpersonal work. I definitely depend on, you know, being there with people and um, just interacting with them in general. And so luckily, um, you know, Pointing back again to networking, I've had been able to um, develop these connections with people, and I was able to make, you know, um, in April of last year, the farmers market poster for uh, St. John's. Um, so on the left, they were able to um, place in their own personal text to um, accommodate it for like things such as market hours and days and times. Um, and then on the left, it was a sticker. And then this year, um, I was able to, you know, start up doing events once again, which has been very refreshing. And I definitely didn't realize exactly how much I missed it. Um, yeah. And then another thing that I was able to, um, that was able to come out of the pandemic and was being able to also push myself as far as um, thinking what are these different ways that I can still be trying to be active with work and my artwork uh, versus just, you know, waiting on when is the tattoo shop going to reopen. Um, so I was able to do a couple of different murals downtown Portland. The one on the left was the very first mural I ever did. Um, it was a great learning experience. It was on one of the boarded up buildings um, downtown, which 
later with all of those boards. I'm not sure if everybody um, knows that the uh, the Portland Street Art Alliance and the Portland Art Museum um, work to have this conservation uh, project going on with the boards. Um, so that way at some point, um, you know, hopefully as we're getting out of the pandemic, we, um, that they will be on display and on an exhibit. So um, even when it came to um, all of the different protests, like for Black Lives Matter and for George Floyd, which is also um, a huge influence of that type of content for that initial mural, um, that, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought, <laughs> rambling on. And then on the one on the right is my second mural. Um, it was a little bit more um, openness to it. And I wanted to try to convey, um, you know, a little bit of my own identity with like hinting or winking at um, the idea of it being like Papel and with flamingos. So, because that's, that's my spirit animal. Um, any questions? Sorry. Any questions here? Oh, okay, sorry, I just went back to the chat. Okay, where should young people seek support to get their first paying orders? That's a really good question. Um, so you, I am always happy to give um, personal advice with that, but um, so I would definitely say, um, so I do everything in person or I have, set up different accounts. So like say like PayPal or something in case um, having that direct contact with people um, isn't able to happen. So like an in-person transaction, um, things like that. And also posting and sharing your work. Word of mouth is huge. Um, they, I can't even tell you how many times I have been able to meet people um, through other people just by them saying, I heard about you, I'm interested in purchasing some of your um, work. And then that's when you start to um, get those seeds planted and then start to expand a little bit more. I'm not sure if that helps to answer your question or not. So. Okay. And then I'm going to go on to tattoos. My main, my main job, my full-time career. Um, these are just general examples of some of the work that I've done. Um, tattooing, just brief in Oregon and throughout the United States. Um, each state has very different tattooing laws. Um, in Oregon, it is by far one of the strictest in the nation. So I am always telling um, my clients and also young people that are interested in getting a tattoo, it is the safest place to get tattooed. Um, I have to, just general examples, I have to be certified in first aid and CPR. I have to know enough about um, people's blood, so blood pathogens and why exactly it is dangerous to have these certain exposures when it comes to other people and their their own personalized germs um and yeah super clean and um yes yeah, so just to touch on a little bit of these tattoos that i show in the middle it's my um business card um i branded it as being a type of loteria card and having me be the face of it and on the top left, the little angel, that is the very first tattoo that I ever did on anyone else. And it was, and that's on my mother. Um, she definitely pre-committed years ago before I ever even started to um, really get serious about tattooing. Um, and she said that she would be my first client ever. So that is on her. And then on the far right with the apples, it is a cover up. Um, friend of mine from high school got in touch and trying to turn something that originally he wasn't very happy with into something that he truly loves. And then just other um, different pieces. A lot of my tattoos, um, it tends to lean towards the more painterly side. 
um, or so what it's been described as, I still get very awkward when it comes to describing my work. I don't know if I'm ever going to get out of, uh, grow out of it, um, just because it's like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Um, and then um, that other one, the muñeca, that's on myself. I tattooed that on myself. Um, so yeah, so I try to play around with different content as also in my tattoos, um, be it with, you know, Chicana or Chicanex, um, very forward content, as well as um, with pop culture and doing my own twist on that as well. Um, and a lot of the prints that I sell and um, amongst other things, they also help to um, as a bridge into tattooing and with those designs. So um, things like the Selena and Frida, those are um, available to be tattooed. Um, I try to also make it so that tattoos are accessible when it comes to um, a variety of ages and people, because obviously here you have to be 18 and over um, to get a tattoo. But even for people that say like the artwork, but they, um, but a tattoo is just too much of a commitment, they can definitely commit to getting a print or any other, um, you know, tangible piece of artwork. Um, so yeah, so that's my little blurb. Are there any questions at all, be them tattooing related, um, other things, if you have any specific technical ones? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna just go back here. Has anybody thought about getting a tattoo? Um, are they scared? I know sometimes parents, mine at first were like, don't do it. But um, here I am. <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. I, I know I joined in halfway through your session and thank you again for sharing. Um, I think I saw there, there was a question from Laura, uh, students who you these amazing arts too. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't see that. Thank you for pointing out. Do you, I have students that can teach these amazing arts. So, um, no, I don't have my own um, little mentees. I have, um, when it comes to actually teaching art, I know that is something that my family has always um, told me that I should be a tattoo or a tattoo, a teacher when it comes to art. And um, I am always happy to do uh, to do that and to give advice. Um, I think especially with the pandemic, it makes it really difficult because a lot of it, I'm so hands on uh, when it comes to work. But I, would, I think I'm definitely, you know, broadening my um, perspective as far as um, wanting to teach uh, some fine art or like painting or drawing, just anything like that. Um, you know, especially being an angsty teenager at first when people, when I, a lot of people would say, you know, you need to like be teaching art, you need to be doing these, you need to have a very structured and contained sense of what art is and um, in order to be seen as being serious or being um, professional, whatever that actually means. Um, I didn't want to do that. So for the longest time, I was like, I don't even want to teach. I don't want to even go near that. I am too headstrong about doing my own thing and having people accept that. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Has anybody taken any art classes or does your school have um, a pretty developed art program or is it something that you never considered about taking an art class? Oh, that's great. Yeah, that is extremely important. And I'm sure that a whole bunch of people um, really appreciate, you know, you being the one to actually push for that and also um, to do it. I know when I was younger, I didn't have the skills or the tools to, you know, really push for an art program and also 
going to um, a school that was pretty new at the time. Um, also, it just it wasn't in in their means to essentially have it. So that's great. A one point perspective. Yeah. That's great. I have a question. What is, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're welcome. What is your favorite piece that you've done over the years? Like, uh, like in general or tattoo wise, like anything? Oh man. Um, I think, I think I have a few. Um, when it comes to actual paintings, um, I don't think that I have a specific piece. I like uh, gifting and surprising people with my work, um, just kind of like kamikaze them with art. Um, and if anything, I, it sounds terrible, but I like to make people cry with my work. Um, and of course, you know, tattoos, that just naturally happens because of the like physical pain that happens. But um, yeah, I would say just anytime I'm able to surprise somebody with a piece, especially when it has to do with a portrait of a loved one or anything like that. Um, I think seeing that somebody is truly touched by my work, because um, you don't get that a lot. You don't get to see people's initial reaction. You kind of like throw your art out there and it's just out there in the world. You don't get to interact with people or have that immediate reaction from them and to see that truly genuine um, reaction is always really um, refreshing and great to see, it's a great ego boost. Um, when it comes to the tattoos I've done, um, just because it was my first one and it was so such a special experience to have and to see how um, supportive my parents are, it, I think it would definitely be a tie between tattooing my mom and also my um, my dad. I've been able to tattoo both of my parents. Took my dad a little bit longer. Uh, he was my 46 tattoo because in Oregon you got to do 50 and so you got to keep track of all of them. So he definitely was given a hard time about being, you know, nearly to the last about it. And then, um, and then tattoos that I have um, I would say I have both of my parents' uh, portraits on my arms, and each of each of them were um, surprises. And so, once again, being able to do it on a more on a receiving end as well as to show them through that medium, um, I think those would definitely be my top favorite parts of it. Yeah. Oh, cool. Wow, for him playing the tuba. Yeah, I feel, um, and that's one thing that's great that you're being able to, um, you know, provide that type of access to the arts with your own nieces and nephews. Um, I'm gonna touch on that other one real quick before we run out of time. But um, yeah, with me, it's always been about representation um, with, when it comes to art and not having it be, you know, to show people that there's more than just, you know, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera as being like the brown artists of the century. And especially with my nephew, I want him to see, you know, there are artists that look like you that have the same uh, background as you and you can also share it on an intimate level and connect with the pieces as well. And even when it comes to tattooing, um, being, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, it is, it's white. It's white up here. It's not very diverse um, compared to other parts of the country. And so I also do my best to make my tattooing space very safe for my clients and letting them know, you know, just because they have been told, you know, a certain tattoo isn't going to look good on their skin. That's inherently racist. Um, and just wrong. Um, you should never be turned away because of who you are and be limited to what you want just because of your own identity. I don't believe in that. It's like a zero tolerance thing that I have with my clients. And so that's also why, you know, I've been able to, um, 
but a bunch of my clientele are black and brown people. And I absolutely love that. And um, to also have them see that there is another artist that they can also connect with beyond the art um, is a great thing as well. And then how many tattoos have I done in total? Oh man, I lost count. Well over 200, that is for sure. I've been tattooing in, um, for over four years now. So um, with the, you know, with last year being the exception as far as it being, you know, getting the shutdowns with the pandemic, um, it's been pretty busy every single year. So yeah. Any other last minute questions before we get cut off? No. Well, thank you everybody so much for, you know, hearing me chit chat, <laughs> flap my gums about my work and uh, my career. I hope that it, um, you know, was insightful. Um, and if anybody ever has a question, I can always, um, in the larger chat, I'm not sure if that's how it would work, Rose, um, for putting out my email that you can always email me. Um, and I can also put my um, social media links. That way everybody can also check out um, some of the stuff that I'm actually talking about um, in truer time as well. Thank you, thank you.